Warm welcome uh, from myself. Yeah. My name is Jurik. I'm, I'm working for Pulse and uh, in parallel I'm uh, an entrepreneur. I'm running uh, two companies, uh, one in the UK and one in Germany. Um, but my day-to-day -day main job is uh, at Pulse. I'm a director of new business development and uh, my second role with Impulse is um, the global application engineering. So I'm pretty sure nobody here in the room knows about Pulse. Um, and I'm also quite a um, exotic guy here because I'm an electronics engineer and I'm deep diving into hardware. So um, now the question is, what is a hardware guy doing at a data festival, right? So um, there's, a, there's a reason behind. So um, Pulse is a, a medium-sized company. We're doing around 200 million euros in sales and we're selling power supplies uh, all over the place. So one third is in the US, one third in Europe and one third in Asia. And uh, it's just power supplies for industrial usage. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty simple product. And um, since I'm in charge of global application engineering, uh, my day-to-day -day problem is that um, we've got plenty of customers all over the globe, and they call in and they have questions around the product, right? And most of the um, questions they have, they have a very strong um, application-specific background. So. For me, is the problem because I only have two guys uh, in Singapore, uh, seven guys in Europe, and uh, one guy in the US. So it's pretty difficult um, in dealing with like 8,000 customers in each region um, to give them a proper support. So, and to understand about their application and to find the right product for their needs. So, the idea was to come up with something and to utilize new technologies um, like um, um, available uh, these days in the IoT sector to build a measurement tool which uh, can then be installed by the customer himself and we have remote access and we can see um, what's the application doing and can then uh, better support the customer. So this was the main idea. And um, we started, um, basically we started one year ago and now we have 10 uh, measurement boxes. We call it Smart Fab Box. Um, we have them in the field now. One is, uh, one is running, uh, for example, in a German logistics uh, factory, which we will see as a live demo. We can directly dive into the data stream and uh, we can see it. But um, first of all, let me quickly give you a rough uh, overview on the, on the whole concept. So um, our product is typically um, is for the whole lifetime of a, pro of a, of an, uh, of a big um, factory, right? So we're not supplying like one uh, one unit and that's it, but we try to um, supply a unit which is stable and reliable for 10-15 years without any problems. So it's about, um, in the industry we call it life cycle costs, um, for the guys close to IT it's um, about the um, total cost of ownership basically. So our idea is with our products, because we're world market leader in efficiency, that's also the reason why a lot of Bitcoin farming companies are using our power supplies, because they're very, very efficient. Um, so it's about reducing um, life cycle costs. So that's what our products are mainly about. So here's the saving. This is just the, the price you pay if you uh, buy the product. This is the uh, operation cost and this is like for the disposal at the end. And our, our main um, business objective is to be as cheap as possible over the whole life cycle for the customer. So it's not just sell it and forget it, but it's sell it and have a lot of fun with it and no problems with it in the field. Um, to start with this idea, I wanted to um, yeah, give a short example. So um, let's do some assumptions right now. Yeah, um, Just decide which car you would buy. If you um, want to buy a car which you use for the next 10 years and you're doing like 15,000 uh, kilometers per year, so, um, yeah, just make up your mind uh, under the life cycle costing perspective, which one would you buy? Which one is your car, right? So, who's for the BMW? Okay, three, four, five guys. Who's for the Ford? Quiet, quiet, okay, good. <laughs> it's dangerous, dangerous guys, you're in Munich. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> but that's, that's good, so just keep that in mind. So. Using the um, life cycle costing uh, approach by the um, German uh, Engineering Association uh, brings us down to this assumption. Um, just 
based using using all the information which is available in the data sheet and as we all know data sheets can be trusted but it's not a good idea to always trust them right especially if it comes down to cars and emissions so here you can see um, here you can see uh, the BMW and the Ford so initial cost this is what you um, pay the dealer it's uh, 38 grand or 52 the usage cost per unit is 15,000 and uh, 15,000, so that's um, the, the, the fuel consumption. Um, since um, the car is 10 years old, I think you can still sell it, so you don't have to scrap it. So there's zero cost for the disposal, which then leads us to the overall life cycle cost. Uh, for the BMW, it's 68,000, for the Ford, it's 53,000, so these are the annual costs um, coming with the car. So um, the guys who pick the Ford, it's the cheapest solution, right? So bad for BMW, but it's, uh, that's reality. So it's about, you know, this, this kind of um, approach is what our customers typically do if they decide on a power supply, right? They do the same approach, just get rid of the car and write Pulse power supply and some competitor power supply here. It's exactly the same approach. And that's difficult to um, compare because um, especially um, the data sheets and there are a lot of assumptions we make so we just did the assumption 10 years and 15,000 kilometers you might drive 20 you might drive 5 yeah, you don't know um, so that's an assumption we have to make and uh, it's also um, the data sheet information is it really accurate yeah is the fuel consumption really true we don't know so um, this is the problem and this is exactly um, on the problem our customers have um, when they decide for a power supply. There is a data sheet, there's a data sheet of course, there's a data sheet of some competitor. Can I trust the information in the data sheet? And um, yeah, how, how many watts and how many amps do I really need? I don't know, I have to go there, uh, put a multimeter there and measure it. Yeah, and nobody wants to go on shop floor and measure uh, for a couple of days. So this is the problem. And um, this is just another uh, short example um, on how uh, the typical uh, assumptions look like in an application for a power supply. So the customer wants to have a one-phase system, um, for example, and 10 amps or yeah, yeah, just 10 years. Um, it's 24-7 usage, um, 20 um, degrees, 35 or minimum 10. 40% uh, relative humidity, um, no special um, requirements, and 20% idling. And this is a very important assumption. We assume eight um, euro cents per kilowatt hour for the for the energy cost. So these are typical assumptions. Yeah, my, my customers they do that every day. Yeah, that's uh, that's standard. Um, and if you do a um, approach on the uh, with the data sheet, like exactly the similar setup um, in, with the car. Um, you have like our product uh, with initial cost and uh, another German competitor which is also based in Munich and is uh, delivering power supplies and uh, has also blue color. <laughs> um, so you can compare, uh, there are different initial costs but the, the, the main interesting part is the usage cost. Um, so this is the energy which the power supply um, wastes because efficiency yeah, is different. Like the competitor in this case, they have like 90, uh, 92 percent efficiency, so eight percent are lost in the transition of energy, and heat up the whole system. So that's you pay you pay money for heating up something, right? There are losses, and uh, both, for example, with uh, ninety six percent efficiency over here. So um, that's on ten years. That's a big difference. It's two hundred bucks um, you pay for a power supply to heat up your your application, but you don't want to pay it because it's just lost. So at the end, if you compare it, um, the product, um, our product might be uh, a little bit higher in the um, purchasing price than the competitor, but in the end, if you compare it on 10 years and on 10,000 units, uh, it's a big difference. It's a, it's a really big difference. And um, again, here we have the problem. We did The whole calculation is based on assumptions. We don't know how it behaves in reality. <laughs> So um, you can also do uh, nice and fancy calculations then based on this data. You can just calculate in return of invest. So you pay a little bit extra and does it pay off. So basically um, investing in power supplies, also especially if you into into hardware and um, empowering big server parks, um, 
this is a this is a very good uh, way in investing money. Just invest in the efficiency. You get a better return rate than you have in um, than uh, you have in uh, if you put the money in the bank. So, okay. The challenges are clear. I think you uh, understood the whole setup and the problem uh, I'm in on a daily uh, basis. So the challenge is we have no exact knowledge about the load profiles. Yeah, we don't know how many kilometers the customer uh, is running his car. We don't know how many MC really needs. And uh, there is little trust in calculations um, based on data sheets, etc. That's the problem. So we came up with a pull smart fat box, which is a um, looks like this. It's a pretty unspecular box, but you can do a lot of things with it. It comes, um, you can measure literally everything. So you can measure up to 64 channels. So you can measure speed, you have GPS data. You can measure vibration, you can measure sound, you can, you can do everything with it. And uh, we're using it to measure um, current and voltage, of course, because we're a power company, but you could do anything else with this box. The box is pretty cheap, it's less than 2,000 euros and it works uh, globally. So you can get one box and you can send it to Singapore, it will just, you plug it in, you power it up and it will automatically register in the cloud and send the data straight away with a latency of less than one second. And it's working in the US, it's working in Singapore, it's also working in China. Uh, we still have a little bit of VPN topics there, um, because it's um, for remote maintenance, we're using VPN channels, that's a little bit challenging in China these days. but. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the box and how it looks like, and um, yeah, it's pretty cheap, it works everywhere, so uh, it's, for us it's an open source tool, so whenever somebody has an interest and wants to try it in his application or wants to use it, just drop me a call, you can get one and work with it. It's uh, also the source code which is implemented, we're using Python, we're using Node-RED, and uh, but the, the the data channel is based on uh, MQTT, so we call that uh, RTDC, it's a real-time data channel. So uh, you can use that infrastructure straight away. The data, by the way, is uh, sent to a cloud, which is uh, not hosted by Amazon. It's a local cloud by, uh, by a leading um, provider uh, near Hanover. So the data is stored there. And um, you will then have an, an online um, website, www.loadprofiling.com or www.powersupply.cloud, and you can register there and you have immediate access to your data. You can then run your Python script, you can uh, interact with any other um, system like R or Tableau, that's no problem. You can directly log into the data in the cloud, they're stored in RAW, and then you can work and analyze the data. So this is uh, the, the setup. Um, if, you don't, uh, if you don't have LTE or 3G, you can also use a standard Ethernet cable, this is also working. The whole system is running on embedded Linux, um, so we did a small um, embedded PC for this system and it works perfect, it's stable, um, there is, yeah, it, it, it's, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty shocking how, how, how easy it was and um, how fast uh, we were able to uh, bring up the first uh, sample. We tested it with two customers and now we've got more than 10 boxes around and I've got a lot of customers who say their data engineer needs a toolbox um, to collect the right data directly in the application and that's uh, where typically people can use it. And, you know, for me, in my use case, I'm just using it for the application engineering to better understand about our customer needs uh, on the power side. So we have one application in the e-commerce sector. Um, it's uh, one of the biggest um, logistics hubs in Germany. And there is a roller, roller belt, conveyor belt, and um, it's a buffer. Um, it's a buffer area, so there are stored uh, 110 parcels. Um, and then, um, if, uh, if the, the, the storage is full and the operator has time, uh, it will then offload uh, all the 110 parcels, and they will be brought directly into the truck and be delivered uh, within four hours. So this place here is um, in, uh, in the middle of Germany and uh, the guys in this factory, they like the smart fan box, they said, hey, we've got a lot of other power supplies and we want to understand, um, can we use this technology to understand about our, our problem, about the power supply? So uh, we built it in there and um, the cool thing is they gave us the, the buffer conveyor system where they store all the parcels being shipped to Munich. Okay, so for me it's interesting. Um, 
and that's important know-how because um, what I can do now is when I uh, take a look into the data under uh, loadprofiling.com or on the pools website, you can immediately see from the from the power consumption how often they unload the belt. So it's easy. Um, I can just calculate. Uh, for example, in average, they are unloading four times a day. So I know they are dispatching 440 parcels to Munich within four hours. So this is just by just by taking a look at the power consumption. Um, every load has an individual fingerprint, and um, our system detects the fingerprint of the load, and we can then automatically um, see if everything is all right. For example, um, if you have in one of these drives here, if you have um, if it's bumpy, yeah, and it's um, um, you will see that as a sinus in the data. So you will, uh, we're just running a small, um, that's, that's one of the projects we're doing right now. We're running TensorFlow and we built in the embedded computer, a very small, efficient uh, embedded computer. We are building it into the power supply and uh, we're uh, migrating TensorFlow on it. So and it does a small uh, FFT online. So all the data coming uh, from, the, from the load is run through an FFT and we automatically see if there are some frequencies. So if we, for example, if we have like 700, 700 hertz, we immediately uh, can tell you which one of the 32 motors has a problem. We can detect it and we can find out long, long, long before it breaks. But we can, we can see that. And um, these are like the potential use cases which we're working on right now. And uh, in this use case, um, the customer wanted to understand, has he chosen the right power supply? And uh, is there a saving potential for him? And um, we can, we can quickly go on the website here. Um, let me see if it is working. I have a problem with two screens. Um, just give me one second. So we just go on our website, www.pulsepower.com. <coughs> I mean, there's much more data um, around this application, but um, since this is confidential and since you understand a lot of things in detail of the application, we just publish a few um, data sets on the website, which are agreed with the customer. So. Um, Close this one and go on uh, support. Here we get smart fan box. And um, the cool thing about this uh, the dashboard um, is that we can easily integrate the dashboard into other websites. So it's pretty easy. That can be done literally in five minutes, and then you have a dashboard and you can configure it in the way you want it and can just integrate it into any. Uh, any random uh, uh, CDN. So this is uh, how the dashboard looks um, if you if you log into it. Since it's uh, confidential information, I can't go there. But I picked the most relevant things. So um, right here, what we see right now is they're in maintenance mode, so they are not running it right now. Um, they only have 36 watts, which uh, they use for the uh, for the for the lights uh, on the uh, for the LED lighting on the on the conveyor belt. So this is pretty stable. Um, typically, you see uh, immediately if it's loading or unloading. But we have uh, persistent data as well, so we can see about the usage uh, of the whole conveyor belt. And you can see that on the right side, so 24% of the time it is loaded and 0.2% of the time it's unloading, because unloading is a very fast process, so it's just 0.2%. And it's in standby mode, I mean, this is uh, it's a buffer, right? So it must be in standby <laughs> somehow. Uh, so it's 38% uh, of the time. And uh, if you go further down, um, you will see um, the power down, so they shut it down at 36% uh, of the time. And the most interesting part about this application is that um, on the same conveyor belt, uh, we measured one power supply by Pulse and one by some other vendor. 
we compare we, we are comparing both of them and what we found that, and the finding was significant so um, this down here uh, the application is running since March 2017 it was the first application we did and the saving um, just by changing the power supply is already 33.36 euros in application so it's not a data sheet comparison now it, it has a it, it's the comparison is based on real data and that's that's a new thing about it and that's how we can really use data to better um, understand um, about the uh, application of the customer and how um, they can generate savings of course they uh, with energy savings we have co2 savings etc etc so um, I think that's obvious another very interesting finding and that's uh, I consider it as the the best finding of the whole setup here was um, we found out that the peak load used by the conveyor belt is 400 watts and uh, our competitor sold a one kilowatt power supply to the customer right and they, they need a lot of uh, power supplies just to give you a feeling it's uh, 32 kilometers of conveyor belt and every 10 meters is a power supply so they've got plenty of power supplies in the conveyor system and well their, their competitor in Munich did a great job they sold him a one kilowatt device which is double the price uh, of a 400 watt device so the first learning was you can buy a much cheaper power supply and uh, if you switch to another vendor you can also uh, generate more savings than uh, 33 euros per year um, just with one device and the price difference um, if you compare 40 m to 40 m was just five euros right so the customer paid five euros less for the competitor than for us but now he has not uh, there, there, there would be no chance to um, realize the saving so um, yeah I think we're coming to the end so that was just a, a, a short overview you can always go on the website and see what's what's happening um, I think when the, the when the maintenance is done, which I think should be um, this this evening, so tomorrow in the morning shift, it should be operational again. So you can log on to this website and you can see how many, and you can calculate by by your own how many parcels they will deliver to Munich in the next four hours. So um, yeah, thanks for your attention. Again, you know, uh, you've seen I'm, I'm a hardware guy. I'm not deeply into uh, data science, but I consider this uh, very interesting, and I think. Um, for us as tools, the, the most important aspect about data science is finding, asking the right questions and then um, finding projects where you can really use data to generate uh, a value out of it. And that's, that's the, the main thing. It's easy to collect plenty of data, but it's about asking the right questions and where do I want to improve and how can I use new technologies for it and that's uh, what, what we're doing. So thanks for your attention, have a, have a nice uh, uh, show and uh, yeah, if there are questions I'm happy uh, to answer them and I'm here the whole day. Thank you. From Puls, uh, what are your questions? Do you have any? Thank you. Uh, uh, how are you providing the most current data on the dashboard? Like you are just sending data very often to the cloud from the box, yeah. or you are reading the data directly from the box box oh. also? Oh. So um, uh, we're doing both. So in the in this application, for example, the data is not stored uh, locally. It's pushed to the cloud directly. So there is no data buffer in between. So it's pushed directly um, to the cloud, and uh, we are collecting data uh, on a yeah, it's like every five milliseconds we're we're collecting data, we're combining them, and uh, we're doing a, a RTDC package uh, to the cloud every second. So in total, um, as far as the data volume is concerned, I think your question is in the, in this direction. Uh, we're pushing about three gigabyte per month in this application, which is quite quite a lot, but um, I think it's it's okay. I, I mean, it's, this is not we're not rolling it out for like thousands of uh, boxes. It's just uh, ten or fifteen or twenty measurement boxes, so we can live with that uh, data volume. Uh, in the next generation, uh, we will have the data. Uh, we will have more data pre-processing in the, inside the box directly, uh, and then we will also have the option to um, do like a, um, a buffer, data buffer of like one hour or two hours uh, in the box itself. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, 
as I also come from the process industry, <coughs> typical time series data often is stored in something like OSIPI, yes. time series things. What was the decision you did it not and you did store in the database? It was basically uh, driven by cost and uh, we needed something to start with and uh, we had literally nothing. So uh, we thought uh, it might be a good idea to, since we had no idea how, how much data we can expect in the future, so we were looking for like a scalable uh, solution. And uh, then we found um, this one company near, uh, near Hanover and they, they did a really good job on this. And it's just for the, for the cloud um, storage area, we're paying like two euros per month, which is, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's like a present. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you.